in that game against uh, Nangaha. There's very little time for Kabul just to uh, take stock here. They have to go hell for leather right from the off. Yeah, well, Kabul cannot be telling themselves they got only 10 runs in the first three overs and we'll be okay if we get that. No, you won't. It's going to climb to 14-15. Such a clever length. I keep saying that about Mohammad Nabi. I'm tired of saying that. But he gives nothing away. He keeps dropping it on the... He was hit um, in a couple of uh, instances yesterday down there when he drifted onto uh, the pads of uh, Gurbaz. Two overs for 29 yesterday. He was uncharacteristically expensive. Once again, drops it right where he should. Well, they only have 240 runs left after this. It's a ridiculous mountain to climb. But, you know, we have enough evidence of the big hitting here, of Hazratullah particularly. Ronki, you just mentioned, got a very quick 50. So, I do hope that Kabul make a, a fair bid at this and get to maybe 200 or so and uh, just give them a scare bulk. Well, that was a scare between the wickets then. A little bit of a yes, no, excuse me between the two batsmen. All's well that ends well. Has Rotullas off the mark. It's six without loss. How much more can a captain get from his batting side? Mohammad Nabi should be delighted. And Brian, I must also mention that his big hitting abilities are also very special. Look at that shy. Yeah, he would have been there. He's watching the ball rather well, Hazratullah, so I don't think there was any danger there. But uh, Nabi as well, he comes in a little late and every once in a while when we chat with him, I say, hey, we missed your batting because it's also electrifying. Just the calmness with which he hits the ball and of course he hits it big. So also a very special bat, Mohammad Nabi. But... Uh, this is the show that we're waiting for, the Hazratullah Zazai show. And uh, who will have the last laugh? Will it be this man, Tarzan here? Will he get to flex his muscles or will Hazratullah deposit uh, many more of these balls outside the park here and cost the ACB a little more? Yeah, Gulbadin Naib, he's going to be bowling the second over, joint leading wicket taker in the tournament. 11 wickets for him so far. Nabi, you're right about his big hitting. 37 today in just 15 balls. Wide. Well, Naib, I think, a little aware of Hazrat's abilities. He should also be aware uh, that his team's defending 245. So don't worry about it. Just go up there and bowl any way you like. It's going to be okay. Well, but the joint uh, highest with Mujib, who, of course, uh, struck gold in that last match of his, took four fabulous wickets. Udana has been priceless. And Shirzad also very quick. Oh, up. And uh, that may not carry all the way. Again, it had a fair amount of width, maybe too much. And Hazrat uh, couldn't quite find the middle of the bat, but that's another fog boundary. Yep, that was uh, somewhere near the bottom of the bat, actually. But he's such a strong man. And, of course, there's no cover out uh, in front of Square on the offside in these early stages of the innings. Holding the pose for the photographers. And uh, a couple of bounces and a fog boundary. We also know what uh, Gulbadin is trying to do because we know Hazrat loves the leg. Hard flat six. Wow. I was about to say Gulbadin and the rest of them would be aware that you don't allow Hazrat to free his shoulders. And he just did. He loves it there. Still hasn't got a, a bat sponsor, but uh, 
the more this tournament goes on and the more he keeps playing like this, surely one's in the offing. Oh, that was uh, very strongly hit, wasn't it? Yeah, much better. Fall. Hazrat just about getting his bat down in time. A little lucky. Scamper across for a single. Knowing how Simon Helmut goes about these things, the coach of the Balk Legends, I'm pretty sure, you know, the message has gone out to the Balk fielders that they should always be throwing at uh, Hazratullah's end. He's uh, a little bit lackadaisical at times in his running between the wickets. Uh, his counterpart in the other team, <laughs> Gail, not electrical, uh, electric running between the wickets, but um, he doesn't need to. And even Hazrat here can just take it easy with the runs. Don't have to take... Uh, unnecessary risks with either the singles or trying to turn them into two goes to the boundary he can hit the ball big we know 124 from just 55 for Hazrat as we were focusing on Gale slower ball okay Samid so uh, sorry that's uh, Darwish Rasuli at uh, long on yeah, we've seen Gulbadin use that slower ball to good effect in the tournament so far yeah, he's a pretty decent bowler. In fact, they got so many Shirzad we were about to mention. Shirzad bowled so well, quick, and of course, with variety as well. That's what he's done so far. Four for 12. Fabulous. You remember that match a long, long time. And of course, one of our leading wicket takers here in the Gulbahar, Afghanistan Premier League, powered by Fogg. Against Paktia, two for 19, two for 10, Nangarhar. Good to see as well Ben Lochlin at mid on having a chat with him. Lachlan, the leading wicket-taker in the history of the Big Bash in Australia. Oh, in the arc. Didn't quite get to the pitch of that, but Hazrat is so strong. Are we going to get tired of saying that? But he's uh, truly a very, very strong individual. And uh, manages to delay that shot just enough. Again, bottom of the bat, but finds uh, the long gone boundary for another fog boundary. Well, there's a deep wide mid-wicket placed specifically for that shot, but uh, still has Rotula managed to find uh, the gap in the field. And straight behind the bowler off the low full toss. Another fog boundary. Very expensive by Gulbadeen Naib this first over. 21 runs off it and after two, Kabul are 27 for no loss. Second over for Mohamed Nabi from the Sharjah club end. Let's have a look at the last ball of that uh, previous over. Clubbed down the ground. Low full toss. And that'll be four more. Another fog boundary. Ronke getting in on the act. Yeah, flying dive to his left, Gulbadin after that over, but uh, maybe just a shade late. And I wonder if it was too close to the square leg umpire and that threw Gulbadin off just a bit. Well, there's the sweep, and uh, <laughs> the umpire doing well to get out of the way. And once again, we do have a deep square leg, so just a single. Those are uh, dangerous shots against Nabi, but Ronki has got away with it twice in a row. Okay, Samed, the leg spinner. Out on the mid-wicket boundary, we'll see him a little bit later on. Oh, was there a little feather on that from Hazratullah? It's run fine. Wait for a signal. And there isn't one. So, uh, yeah, missed chance. Yeah, Hazrat seemed to hesitate just a bit. Should I go for the big one? Maybe not against Nabi. And then uh, it was just an edge. Didn't really move his feet too much. I'm going to have to say you got lucky there. It's a fairly healthy edge, so... Uh, Ikram Ali Kale didn't really have an opportunity to glove it. 
Another very good over by uh, the wily off-spinning skipper of uh, the bulk legends. And uh, it'll end well too. Three gone, 33 for no loss. Let's have another look at that uh, chance. I call it a chance, but it was such a healthy edge. You see, it barely um, touched the gloves of uh, Ikram Ali Kale, just flicked his pad in the end. Yeah, I'm quite convinced that uh, Hazrat was trying to go big and then uh, stopped the shot midway. And that just turns the keeper off once in a while when you expect uh, the batsman to be going big and then all of a sudden it just jabs his bat down. And I think the keeper had gotten up a bit, saying, oh gosh, where's this going to disappear? Tough job keeping. Better you than me, bro. <laughs> there we go. In the arc. And that will go all the way again. That's a Hazratullah's go-to shot. Didn't again for me catch it 100%, but still the strength of that shot, taking it over the boundary line for a fog spagiza. Abdullah Mazari's first ball of the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. And he goes the journey. And again. And that's even further. Oh dear, welcome to the bowling crease. Well, finally, Hazrat hitting the middle of the bat, the sweet spot. And yes, Mazari, welcome to the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. That's what's going to happen. He's got a crabby kind of action, darted it in, but it was in the arc. And Hazratullah, well, he just said, I'm going to take hold of this by the scruff of the neck. Terrific shot. Down the leg side, quite unusual there actually. A wide signal. First two balls, he went to the side of the umpire. Now he's decided to go between the umpire and the stumps. Change of uh, angle in his approach. Six more. Oh, goodness me. Unbelievable hitting. They've all gone in roughly the same area. And uh, Mazari won't forget his uh, APL debut in a hurry. Well, so Kabul doing to Balk what Balk did to them. I think that just about stayed inside the stadium, so a ball saved. Now, 6-6, six, six, wide 6. Remember, Balk took 33 of one, 32 of another. We got uh, 19 now, two balls to go, three balls to go, beg your pardon. Of course, he now goes over the wicket. And should get the same treatment up in the air, this time on the offside, no cover there, over long off. Wow, Hazratullah Zazai, this is what we expected of you, thanks for delivering so far. They couldn't, could they? Two, 245 they're chasing, they made a flying start. <laughs> goodness me you just wouldn't believe it would you well, it almost hit the cameraman high up on the deep mid wicket side just to his left lucky that he's okay but the ball's out of the park so uh, the ball box will come on in and Mohammad Nabi might be chewing that gum a little harder right now saying uh oh hang on now uh, are we gonna be chased 245 no Hazratullah 50 in only 12 deliveries there has to be some kind of a major record here. Hazratullah Zazai, fabulous innings. While we were just admiring the sixes, he's gone to 50. Brian's going to check this for sure. Only 12 deliveries. And up again into the night sky. He's done it. Six sixes in the over. Welcome to T20 cricket. Mazari can only smile, had been taken apart. This is history. And Hazratullah Zazai has joined a very select band. Oh, goodness me. 
I feel really privileged to have been here to see this. And that uh, almost cleared the uh, pavilion. And Mazzari, well, that is what you call a severe hammering. Well, it has to, has to be the fastest 50 anywhere. Oh, that's a very legitimate appeal. And it could even be a run-out chance there. Cheru has Rotula's 50 from 12 balls. He joins Yuvraj Singh in the ICC World 2020 of 2007 and Chris Gale for the Melbourne Renegades against the Adelaide Strikers in 2016 as the joint fastest 50 in the history of 2020 cricket. What? Well, worthy of applause, what a special knock. And let's not talk about chasing 245, but just independently <laughs> applaud what Hazratullah Zaza has done right here in the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, powered by Fog. And he goes big again, doesn't quite find the middle of the bat, but they'll find another boundary. Fine leg was in, and uh, square leg. Where are the place fielders for this man? Nabi, are you a little worried? You should be. Thanks, Brian, for those figures. So, joint fastest 50 in T20s. We'll take it. It's happened right here, right in front of us, right now. Almost anti-climax there. The, <laughs> the single to Hazratullah. 62 from 16 balls. Four fours, seven sixes for him. Nabi's bored rather well in the middle of all of this. He's completing his third over now. One ball left and given only 17. Five overs gone. Remarkable. It's 77 without loss. What a start here for the Kabul side. Absolutely unbelievable. 62 of just 16 for Hazratullah. Just see the six sixes. Uh, the first one clobbered on the onside. Some brilliant hitting. Great striking. Exactly what he was doing in the zone for him, in the slot for him. Going after the left arm spinner with a lot of ease. Absolutely fantastic. Saw that 100 from him the other day, and that exactly he's uh, going about out here as well. And what a feat he's achieved. Never easy. Absolutely brilliant. Seven sixes so far, along with four fours. 16 deliveries. Uh, he's got to his uh, half century. And with me in the com box uh, for the first time today is uh, Alistair Campbell. Welcome, Alistair. Well, they'll get through for two. Hello, hey, Jay. Hello, everybody. Yeah, this is uh, something to behold. It really is. Outstanding hitting from Hazratullah and Luke Ronke, as he was in the previous innings. Just. Uh, a mere onlooker, 14 or 15 balls, where his partner is 62 of 16. Outrageous. Nice pass the outside edge. <laughs> Just looks like a different wicket when Luke Ronke's on strike. Oh, we've got a game on here, big time. I just thought when I was down there that it was a good wicket. I didn't think it would be this good. Bowler's graveyard here tonight in Sharjah, and uh, the batsmen are filling their boots. That's down the ground. That'll be another Spagiza. Well, he's in the act now too, Luke Ronke. who was in the slot from Ben Lachlan, and he's uh, plonked it over middle for six. Absolutely fantastic. Straight down the ground, exactly what he was doing. Full face of the bat, big stride forward, and there she goes. 
Fog maximum once again. Really, it's been a very bright start here. Almost like what uh, the bulk legends did. And uh, really, this uh, runches is on. This game is on. Thought that it's going to be a big score. Not able. Uh, going to be really difficult for the Kabul side. But it's been absolutely uh, the start they wanted. Just what the doctor ordered for them. You can watch all the uh, ball by ball action as well. Click in if, uh, dot com. Log on to it and uh, you can watch every action of the Gulbahar uh, Afghanistan Premier League. Oh, is this going to be out? It is. Gulbadi Naib makes no mistake. And Hazratullah Zazai, his innings comes to an end. He's really peppered the boundary, but on this occasion, not able to get the length, not able to get the elevation, and pays the price. Yeah, once again, going for the big one. This time, uh, not timing it too well. The pad also just turning in his hand. Finding the fielder in the deep. Gulbadi Naib, a very good fielder. Good athletic catch by him. And a very fine innings comes to an end. 62 of just 17 for Zazai. Really played well. It is 6 for 1. So, Javed Ahmadi, he walks, walks in, 102 runs for him in the uh, APL uh, this season, the inaugural season, his best 39, hasn't got a big score. 131, his uh, strike rate, uh, can't really tonk the ball, but really hasn't uh, got that big innings under his belt so far. Last ball of the power play, straight to the fielder, dot delivery, six overs gone, it's 86 for one. Marwais Ashraf into the attack. He finished the innings uh, really well with bat in hand, two lusty blows. But now he's got a bowl on the, the very pitch that he thought was quite nice to bat on. And it's going to be a test, it really is. He's got to be spot on. You've got to make sure all your variations are working, knowing full well that this is a batting paradise. Good start. He is bowling to the new batsman, so uh, that'll make a, a bit of a difference. If he had come on when Hazratullah was still in, then it might have been a different scenario. This was the end of uh, Hazratullah, just not able to get it out the centre of the bat, not able to get it out the middle. And Gulbuddin Naib takes a good running catch. They needed that. They needed to get back in the contest, but he's played another good hand. Brilliant innings. Yeah, really, he was disappointed the way he got out because uh, he was looking so good, getting those six sixes under his belt. Uh, you mentioned about Hazratullah Zai, really a special player. He's got the gift uh, of timing, the way he can really uh, go after the bowling, make a mockery of the bowling. Got a brilliant 100 earlier in the tournament. At this stage, uh, Bulk Legends was 75 for no loss. So Kabul just lost one extra wicket there ahead. As far as it runs are concerned. Nicely played. Very nicely played by seconding that gap. That's going to be a fog four. Yep, there's nobody in that area. Five leg up in the circle. Your square leg is pretty square. And uh, Luke Ronke, he missed out uh, earlier on. Not on this occasion. This time some more bet on it. And he knew straight away. Once he had helped it round the corner timed it well enough raced away for four 
Yeah, nice swivel. Knew exactly what he was doing. Just on the pad line, Ashraf won't be very happy with that. Right in the block hole now. Uh, wanting a single, uh, the non-strike or Ahmadi. Ronki was never interested in one. The target, although a massive one, really uh, they haven't cashed the uh, power play the first six overs. Exactly what Kabul required early on. He's a very canny bowler, Ashraf. He can uh, mix his pace, use his cutters, he's bowled well so far. That's straight to the field. So not able to cash in on that occasion, Luke Ronke. Just hitting a two square. And if you're going at uh, less than 10 to the over as a bowler on the surface, you've done a pretty good job. 244 for six the bulk legends got. So you've got to just make sure as a bowler you're not conceding too many boundaries and trying to just get them to hit it to, uh, to the fielders. Not only in the circle, but on the boundary as well. That's a really good opening over. Just the six from it. 92 for one. So seven of us gone, 92 for one. Luke Ronke uh, is uh, taking his time, 26 or 22. Uh, Hazratullah, what a fine effort. 62 of the 17 uh, deliveries for him. Amadi new to the crease. Ingram, uh, Zaman, uh, Laurie Evans, he's been in great form so far. So they have uh, the batting depth. Good delivery. But yes, you can also uh, create your own uh, fantasy side, test your skills, win big real cash. And you can log on to myteam11.com. Surely a man like Hazratullah, the talent he's got, he'll be in uh, my team. What a talent he is, uh, Alistair. He certainly is in this form of the game. He's a big unit and uh, he hits it miles. Oh, using his feet, Luke Ronke, and uh, a little bit of outswing from Gulbadeen Naib. Just a hint of movement in the air, and it gets past the outside edge. Yeah, just a movement, and that was enough. A uh, bit of lateral movement. Scramble seam, although, but uh, coming down the track there. Trying that big, uh, expansive drive on the offside, missing it completely. These are going to be important overs. Uh, the field can be spread after the power play. So more protection in the deep. That's in the air, just falling short of the fielder. I think if I'm a seamer, I'm trying to bowl as many Yorkers as possible because then you're taking out the pitch, and that's uh, the flat surface. Anything that you were uh, relying on to bounce on this pitch first, uh, we know it's coming on very nicely, and we know that it's good for batting. So if uh, you're a seamer, you just want to be trying to bowl in Yorkers. Pretend that uh, you're bowling at the death. And just get up there full straight. And uh, if you want to mix it up, then maybe the odd slow ball, but think nothing else. There we go. There's a slow ball. Well bowled. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, if that had been a direct hit, he was gone. He didn't even try and slide the bat. He jumped up in the air, Luke Ronke. And uh, it's okay now that uh, it wasn't a direct. He's still there. I'll tell you what, this will be very interesting. I think he was out. Yeah, you're right, I think. Uh, just seeing his reaction as well. Oh, he was struggling. Would have been a goner. Just required a direct hit. Makes a big difference. Yeah, there's a length ball. You don't want to be bowling there. It evades the fielder at mid-off and goes away to the boundary for four. Valiant effort from Ben Lachlan. But length balls, you're inviting the batsman to play a big shot and invariably on a surface like this, the batsman wins. Intent was very good. Straight over the bowler's head, knew exactly what he was doing. Tried his best in the end, but in way, that ball was really hit. Well timed. Another four for uh, Luke Ronke. That's the fourth uh, boundary for him. He's already hit a six as well. Just trying to up, up the ante now. Oh, that's uh, brilliant. In the gap. 
Got to be back to back boundaries to win the over. Eight gone. It's uh, the 100 up as well, 102 for one. Both the 50s coming in uh, quick fashion. The first one, 21, when Hazratullah was out there. Then uh, 27, the second one. So they're doing well. Last ball, uh, previous over. Once again, a very good uh, boundary. Just bowling lane deliveries, and he was up to it. Just waiting for that. As rightly mentioned, Alistair, they've got to be bowling uh, block. All deliveries right out there. The Yorkers. Once again, the length stuff. Not timing it too well this time. Yeah, you're asking for trouble as far as I'm concerned as a, a seamer. If you're bowling uh, length balls on the surface, you've got to treat it as though you're bowling in the last over. Just get your head right, get it uh, on there and just say, right, this is uh, what the situation is. And just pretend uh, that's uh, what you have to do because uh, any length balls, wow, they're disappearing. That's better. That's up in the block hole. Baspin can't get underneath it. And make him hit it to your sweepers. And that's exactly what should be going through Marwes Ashraf's head. And obviously, Gulbuddin Naib, we saw in the last over, he could slow ball. He bowled a couple in the block hole, missed out, bowled length on a couple of deliveries, and went for a couple of boundaries. That's played well. He's finding those gaps up, oh, colliding into each other. That could be painful. Just hope he's okay out there. Gee whiz, I tell you what, that uh, was a fearful blow between the two advancing fielders. One of them's fine, the other's not so fine. That's not what you want to see on a cricket field. They were both hurtling after the ball, trying to make the save, and just couldn't bail out in the end. It was perfectly in the gap by Javad Amadi. And have a look at this. They both got their eyes on the ball. And then look up at the last minute. Muhammad Nabi. There's the shoulder goes into the jaw. That's the problem. Muhammad Nabi's up. He's fine. But uh, it's uh, Usman Ghani. He's the guy that's taken a bit of uh, a blow here. He gets the elbow into the jaw. So I think he's the one that's in trouble. Muhammad Nabi will uh, feel a bit uh, lightheaded, but he'll get up. He'll be fine, but not this bloke. And you don't want to see this. This is uh, not good at all. He's in trouble. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, really is uh, feeling the pain. Just hope that he recovers uh, at the earliest. Really sad to see uh, colliding into each other. You're right. That elbow hitting up. Oh, and he uh, went down after that. Mohammad Nabi uh, just rolling over the skirting, but uh, Usman Ghani, I tell you what, he's in pain. Yeah, and he's a big unit as well, Mohammad Nabi. So uh, let's just hope uh, that uh, everything's okay. The physios and we're out there quickly, but I just think they need more than the physio. They need some uh, medical attention. And uh, there is an ambulance that hangs out the back there. There are medical staff. I think that's what's needed on the field. They need to get that out there and get a stretch there and get this bloke uh, in some uh, prime medical care. Well, here we go. There we there we have it. And uh, Ben Lachlan providing some assistance as well, carrying on the stretcher. And uh, there's another one uh, coming on as well. So finally, we've got some medical assistance because that's what's required. My word. In any other sports, rugby I'm talking about, in the contact sports, this is what's expected, but not on a cricket field, and you don't like to see it. Yeah, really sad to see, really sad. Colliding into each other, really is in pain. Uh, can't really leave the field, so the stretcher being uh, called for. The last thing you want to see on the cricket field. Well, a good sign is that he's sitting up. So uh, that, uh, for me, is uh, 
makes things a little bit easier for you. You're still lying prone on the ground and wasn't moving, then uh, you'd think there was a bit of trouble. But I think that uh, he's been forced into the upright position. And he's uh, slowly, as the seconds tick by, just gaining a bit of consciousness and uh, a few of the faculties as well. Such a good game of cricket as well. I mean, the ball is disappearing everywhere. This is just another look at it in the gap perfectly. And you can't blame. Both fielders are looking at uh, the ball and then suddenly look up and, oh, Muhammad Nabi, he's the bigger unit. He puts the hands up first. And uh, the shoulder, elbow area just connects with the jaw of Usman Ghani. So uh, I'm glad that uh, it looks okay. I think you'll have a bit of a headache. Make no mistake. But uh, precautionary measures being taken, and quite rightly so. And he'll uh, just go for some checkups, go for a scan maybe, just make sure that everything's a okay. Yeah, you're right. I think always uh, better take the precaution. And uh, just got up uh, a bit as well. So uh, hopefully uh, he'll recover pretty quickly. But at the moment... Uh, Getting the attention and much needed attention there for Usman Ghani. Phil Simmons, uh, the national team coach of uh, the Afghanistan uh, cricket side, that has done so well recently, just having a close look exactly what's uh, transpiring. Really, the saddest thing you want to see on a cricket field any injury. Right, so while they uh, deal with uh, Usman Ghani, have a look at this earlier on. This was Hasratullah. He's with the six sixes. This is when history was made here in Sharjah. Some of the cleanest hitting you will ever see. I'll tell you what, this bloke has got an eye for a ball. And uh, they didn't just clear the boundary. They went a long way over the boundary. Huge, massive blows, no bigger than this one. That went straight down the ground and straight onto the roof. Excellent innings from Hazratullah. They could have done uh, with a bit more of him, to be honest. Kabul's one on. But 62 of 17 balls, seven sixes and four fours. Outstanding stuff from the young man. It's not for the first time in the tournament as well. Who could forget his 124 the other night? And he's followed that up with a quick fire 62 here today. Yeah, this is the fastest 50 as well up so far in the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League from Hazratul Azizai. He's been amongst the runs. He's uh, really, really looked good. You see uh, the fastest so far. Coming up just 12 deliveries for him uh, today versus uh, the Bulk Legends before this Rashid Khan 23. Azgar Afghan 25 deliveries for him. Uh, and Tandev Sitch, he's been in good form as well. But he's been special, no doubt about that. <laughs> Crazy. 12 deliveries. And the next best was 23. 271 runs for the same gentleman. And uh, the next best, Defsic on uh, 239. And then Laurie Evans, who's uh, been really good in the tournament thus far. You can't help but think that he'll have a bat tonight and have a chance to add to that total of runs. Ryan Tenderskarta as well from the Bulk Legends. 204, not playing today, given a rest. But he's been outstanding in the tournament as well. Well, this is what happened in the first innings. Uh, it was a brilliant start here for the Belk Legends. Uh, for the openers doing a very good job, laying a very good part foundation. It is six runs, a uh, few no balls as well from Farid Malik. And that really uh, set the tone for Chris Gale. Opened up, played some uh, brilliant shots along with Dilshan. And then against Rashid Khan, this was uh, really special. The left and right combination was uh, really going strong. And one of the reasons that Bulk managed that massive score of 248. 244, beg your pardon. Some uh, lovely striking there. Misfields also happening in between. But overall, uh, some uh, brilliant batting. Chris Gale uh, was really struggling before this one as far as the form was concerned. This was a wicket, but he continued uh, the merry ways. There was only one up. Uh, Way to go about Chris Gale getting to his uh, half century as well. And now, uh, whenever the opportunity was there in his zone, was really looking up brilliant. 
taking toll on anything loose to him was uh, really absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and they just carried on, carried on. That was the unfortunate dismissal of Chris Gale. They had a couple of overs hey. where uh, things went a little awry. Rashid Khan knocking over Malcolm Waller on that occasion. But Rasuli and... Mohammed Nabi, I'll tell you what, they played really well towards the back end. And anything that was served up, they deposited it over the boundary and through the boundary. Mohammed Nabi was particularly strong. Anything uh, that he was able to latch onto went a long way. And then he was uh, out. LBW, good Yorker from Farid Malik. Gulbuddin now perished the very next ball, trying to get on with things. But Mirwais Ashraf, he had a field day at the end. That was a massive blow to end the inning. Smiles all around. But uh, smiles uh, not uh, at this particular juncture here at the stadium because Usman Ghani has uh, suffered a terrific blow to the head in a collision with Mohammed Nabi. But thankfully, the medical staff have intervened and he's uh, on a stretcher and uh, looks like he might be okay. The, the footage we saw earlier was that at least he was sitting up and uh, seemed to be okay. But... As I said, he'll get to the hospital now and make sure he's uh, having all the checks and scans just to make sure that everything's okay. And let's hope that everything is okay. Yeah, we saw there uh, Mohammad Shazad as well. Well, uh, he's the captain of the Park Theatre Panthers, uh, along with the, the stretcher just walking himself. Mohammad Shazad, everybody really praying that uh, he should be okay. Really nothing major, really a sad incident, that collision between uh, Mohammad Nabi and Osman Ghani. That's the last thing you want on a cricket field. Park Thea Panthers, of course, uh, they'll be playing the last game. Not in a very happy frame of mind there, Osman Ghani. Really uh, Very sad. Yeah, you don't want to see this because it's just taken uh, the edge of uh, what is a really, really good game of cricket. And uh, I'm sure we'll still uh, see a very good game of cricket, but... Uh, you just don't like to see that sort of stuff. <coughs> now then, they're just uh, trying to uh, understand where they're going to get this ambulance. Is it going to come onto the field? Where's the entrance? And I'm sure that's at the players' area. That's where they're at, and they can come around and pick them up and whisk them off to uh, a hospital where I'm sure they'll receive them and uh, get done what needs to be done. Right, so we're uh, back to the action, and it's Mirway Sashraf. Three overs, uh, or three balls bowled in this over. He's gone for six, and uh, we can get underway after a bit of a hiatus to uh, deal with a horrific collision to Usman Ghani. And uh, I thought some prayers are with him, and hope that uh, everything is okay after he gets the scans, and he can just have a headache and be back here uh, in the future games in the tournament and play his part. Oh, straight away, straight away, he's bowled a full toss and it's been hit straight to Case Ahmed. Would you believe it? The softest of dismissals. It's Javed Amadi. And after the long break, he's uh, obviously had a long time to think about things. Been a 10 or 15 minute break and he's got a juicy full toss and hit it straight to Case Ahmed. Yeah, absolutely. I think, as you mentioned, a soft dismissal, playing into the hands of uh, KS at the uh, cover region. Would have really dispatched it anywhere, but... Marves uh, getting a wicket here. They've got to uh, pick, pick up a few wickets to put that pressure. And the out for seven, it's 108 for two.
In at number four comes Laurie Evans, the standout batsman for the Cowboys. One on, batted four in the first game, got 79 not out in that uh, mammoth run chase, and a five for the rest of the tournament. So uh, back in to a position that uh, he's uh, got some fond memories of and scored uh, that 79. That was in pursuit of 219. And that was uh, early on in the tournament. Against the Paktia Panthers. And he has uh, come in with the similar sort of effort required, really. Chasing 244. Well, good over from uh, Ashraf, getting a wicket as well. Nine overs gone up, it's 108 for two. Luke Ronke still there, 36 off 28. Chava Damadi, well, he's just been uh, dismissed, hitting a full toss straight to extra cover. And uh, now it's up to Laurie Evans to try and build a partnership and find the boundary a few times. Still a bit of batting to come for the Cowboys. One on Colin Ingram. He hasn't had the best of tournaments, just 18 runs in his four innings thus far. Rashid Khan, we know that uh, he can hit a long ball. Shahidullah as well. So there's plenty to come, but they've got to go at a fair clip. 12.45, so now on 12 and a half to the over required from here on in. Right, so Case Ahmed now. He's bull well uh, so far in the Afghanistan Premier League. Case yes, Ahmed, young lad, a lot of talent, and uh, this was the wicket for Ashraf. Full toss, really juicy full toss, but finding his fielder. Case yes, Ahmed uh, taking up, uh, accepting that catch gleefully. After a break up, at times it's just a lapse of concentration. But this man was special, Hazratullah. Six sixes today, what a knock from him. Really, uh, it's a treat to watch when he's on song, when he gets going. Absolutely fantastic. Saw that uh, innings from Chris Gale, the other left hand at the southpaw in the afternoon. And you did mention, uh, Lister, about the surface, uh, the binding. Looked a different wicket uh, from yesterday. Be low scoring games uh, yesterday, but today it's uh, absolutely different. Yeah, you just uh, get that feeling when you go out there and you've seen wickets all around the world. When I just saw this one today, I just thought this is a belter. This is an absolute beauty. And it's proved so. As mentioned, I didn't think it'd be this good. But. Uh, Yes, it has been good, but also you have to say the bowling from both sides hasn't been uh, up to scratch. There's uh, been a lot of loose deliveries and uh, I think also the wrong length being bowled by the seamers in particular and the little experiments as well. Rashid Khan giving Colin Ingram the ball and saying, have a go. Well, that went for 32 that over. So. I just think uh, that uh, the bowling's have been, or the bowling's been a bit indifferent as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the quality of batting has been absolutely uh, fantastic. Ten overs gone. It's Nelson for two. Carball Worm for a fair amount of its journey so far ahead of that of the Bulk Legends. But uh, bear in mind that Bulk really did accelerate to a crazy degree in the second half of their innings. And that's a wonderful shot from Luke Ronke using his feet, 
freeing his arms, clobbering it through extra cover. Mervez Ashraf getting some treatment there. And Ronke under 42. Good evening to Cherish Sharma. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, Mirai has bowled particularly well to the stage. I think he gave a boundary off in his first over, going uh, down leg. But Ronke has been there for a long, long time. And uh, even though he's been relatively sedate, what's he striking at now? Uh, 123. That boundary will certainly help. And uh, for a change, uh, recognizing Mirwais is, uh, should we say, a very average medium pace, pace, the keeper's up. So that's new. And also the fact that uh, Ronke had been giving him the charge. So that's a good move by uh, the bulk legends. Yes, Ikram Ali Kale moving up to the stumps, complete with helmet. Oh, just to the right, a short third. Nothing going well for the man who gave six sixes away, including a wide uh, and wide as well. So. Uh, I feel a little sorry for him. Yes, Mazari diving over that one, and Mervais wasn't very impressed. <laughs> uh, care to uh, translate that, Brian? I think it went something along the lines of bad luck. <laughs> but I love you anyway. Um, Mirwai's uh, just a little more expensive in this over so far, but he's a very clever bowler. Doesn't allow too much pace, for instance, for the batsman to utilize. And while the keeper was up now, of course, he's gone back. Just a quick mention that when I uh, did ask Mohammed Nabi some time back that who would you like to single out as one of the youngsters to watch out for, he did mention the keeper's name, Kramali. Oh, just to the right, the diving keeper. Not much going right for him. At as well, but uh, it's rather unfortunate. So one ball still to go, and uh, thirteen off it. Well, they're over halfway towards their target. Uh, Kabul, just over halfway through the innings, so they're by no means out of contention here. And with Laurie Evans at the crease, they will remain in contention, you would imagine. We'll have to be generous to Laurie Evans. He's just come in and uh, faced four deliveries yet. Oh, low full toss. Unable to take toll. Watch out for that run out. That's the last thing Kabul need. But you're right, as long as Laurie is there, plenty of hope. And uh, 11 overs gone now. It's 124 for two. Bolt! Ronke goes. Case Ahmed skids one through him. It ricocheted off the pads to disturb Ronke's off stump. And the young leg spinner strikes. Well, that's a real shame from uh, the Kabul chase perspective. Ronke was finally cutting loose after that Hazrat Zazai show. And uh, he just was never confident against uh, Case. Played half cock and paid the penalty. Didn't go forward, didn't stay back, just stayed right there. And uh, uh, it's knocked through. A clever ball by Case and uh, not such a clever uh, defense by uh, Luke Ronke. He really wasn't looking to hit that anywhere, just to tap it down. 47 though, and it's 124 for three.
Jahidullah in at number five for Kabul. So a left and right hand combination now. And Hamid Hassan is down uh, pitch side. Yeah, well, he's still hanging on because uh, there's so much going on that uh, we'll get to Hamid in a second. So a quick single stall in here. But this is a real setback now for Kabul's one on because, Brian, I'd love to make the point again about the difficulty of a chase. And uh, a lot of cricket fans may not be able to appreciate the fact that when you have to keep going hard all the time, it's just not usually possible, which is why 200 is chased once in 100 matches. And 245, I, I dare suggest, once in 500 matches. Yeah, well, the issue is, of course, I guess, that, um, of course, uh, the last 10 overs of an innings don't include a power play. True. That certainly adds to uh, the problems. But Kaysay Madhya has bowled really well. I think he gave only three runs away in his first over, and now... Only two and has a wicket. So another special over. The wrong one. This might earn them two if they wish to run quickly enough. Yes, they do. However, what a terrific start provided to Kabul by Hazrat Zazai. Uh, what a shame that he uh, left when he did. And now, of course, respite for bulk. Goes big straight behind the bowler. Got plenty of bat on it. And so if Evans uh, is not going to do it right now, Shahidullah will. It's 132 for three after 12. Still another 113 required in eight overs. And it is time now to uh, go down to Hamid Hassan. I think he's got a special guest with him. With Hazrat Zazay, the fastest and the quickest. He got a 50. Hazrat, very well played. Dear Khabating. Dolas Balobani, 50, or Shpak Bala Shpak Chakye. So, where did you feelings about it? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Feeling the sense for the next thousand years, I feel like I'm from the Sardar Khushal. And by the match, I'm going to say that 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 I'm going to say در خ گری سوبر زم شپاک بالا شپاک چکی والی یوراجم اوستان مون پاگه کسانو کراغه نو چون افتخار کې په دې باندې چا غشان ته سټارانو سره دی نوم راغه د افتخار زای دا زکه پر سړی کوشش کی چې یو ریکارډ جوړ کی نو کرکټ دا ریکارډ د پارار یو لوبغړې چې رزین او غازان ته یو ټارګیټ کی چې ریکارډ جوړ کی نو زما کوشش هم دا او هسم هم دا تر سو یو ریکارډ خپل بنوم کوم نه ریکارډ جوړ کوم هغه شکر الحمدلله د میچ کې مې جوړ کړ پاس په کریس ګیل باندې ډیرې خبرې کړی دی کله چې تا چې کې شروع کړل کریس ګل د خلکو نه یې شو یو دو پختنې د نوري لرم 250 سلوی خرن د تاسو ته ټارګیټ ته څه فکر کوي دا رنز به تاسو چیز کوي زکه ویکټ خو ډیر خخ کاری ویکټ البته بیټینګ ته خوې کړ نو څنګه چې زمونږ بیټسمنان روان دي ویکټ شته دي او بیټسمنان هم خو لرو نو کرکټ د اخر کې بیا پته لګي چې کیږي او یو پختنه بلا دینه پس دویم راوند اول مو شروع کیږي تاسو سونه ایکسایټمنټ دی بل راوند ته او څنګه فینیش کول غواړي په دې ټورنامنټ کې ځکه سونه چې خلک وای ستاسو او د بلخ ټیم چې دی فیورټ دی نو فکر کوي چې تاسو فیورټ استې کدو البته هغه هم تماشان چانس یې له هغه هم مینه وال ډیر لري مونږ هم لرو خو مونږ خپل کوشش کوو هغه هم خپل کوشش کوي ګورو چې کوشش کوو چې سیم فاینل وګټو نو فاینل کې بیا ګورو ان شاء الله د ښه چانس د پاره ان اول د بیسټ
Hazrat Zazay, uh, he amongst the legends like Ivraj, six ball six sixes and Gary Sobers. And he looking forward to win the game like 245 is not an uh, easy run, but they have plenty of batting and uh, the only thing is to stick in the crease and win the game for the team. Back to commentary box. Thanks very much, Hamid, and thanks to the history man down there, Hazratullah Zazai, 50 and 12 balls, joining Yuvraj Singh and Chris Gale as the joint record holders of the fastest 50 in this form of the game. Ben Lachlan not very really impressed with that boundary to Shahidullah. Seven off the over, 13 gone, 139 for three. Case Ahmed, who's bowled very impressively so far. All things considered, he's bowled extremely well. And, uh, I'm not suggesting he's a mystery bowler, but it's a little difficult to read. And uh, one for 12, all things, you know, considering what's happened in the match so far, exceptional. Not so sure Laurie Evans uh, might have the measure room. But Shahidullah may, as he did last over. Yes, he settled into the tournament quite nicely, Case Ahmed. I just got the impression early on it was all a bit of a novelty for him. Uh, smiling a lot whenever the camera was on him. He's not smiling now, though, because he's gone for six. Well, I did suspect that Shahidullah would be far more familiar and uh, less afraid of his reputation or his ability. He goes for another maximum. We've had plenty in this tournament. 248. I think the 250th will be memorable. It may come in this match. Was the wrong one, I think, but uh, it didn't matter. He got to the pitch of the ball. It was full. And we have another fog. Shpagiza. So there's been a quiet spell for the last few deliveries. Finally, the ground coming alight again. here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium thanks to Shahidullah there's two 48 sixes in the tournament so far and 32 of them alone have been in this single match quite astonishing 23 in the first innings and nine already in this one yeah well as uh, Hazrat played it was quite the Chris Gale show in the first innings just stood there and hammered it to all parts oh Wrong it again. Maybe that's doing too much. And Evans might get away. As a matter of fact. You've called it right, Charu. I'm not sure Laurie Evans is picking Case Ahmed here. It's a good over. Just uh, eight runs from it. 147 for three. It's a brave chase, this, by Kabul Zwanan, but uh, they now require 98 from six overs, so uh, the asking rate has uh, jumped up to 16.33 runs per over. Well, we've seen terrific action in the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League so far, but this match is unforgettable. A special one. <coughs> and that goes over the point boundary for a six. 
So the 150 comes up. Shahidullah has decided that we will try and make a, a real go at this 245. Well, it was a, a full toss dipping away. I wonder, there was no claim by the batsman saying, well, it was over waist height. He's happy with the six. Don't see that very often. And that one's over extra cover. Another fog boundary. This is terrific stuff from Shahudullah. 29 off 12 balls. And Gulbadeen, the joint leading wicket taker in the tournament with 11 scalps. Two overs and two balls for 41. Well, he's just joining the band of bowlers who've been uh, taken apart today. This, of course, you can't even blame on the pitch. He just got to uh, that low full toss, hammered it over extra cover. And uh, no cover, really. Caught the sweet spot of spot of the bat. That could be another boundary. Big uh, run coming in. Yeah, well done. <coughs> Big Ben Lachlan out there on the point boundary does really well. Gulbadeen just uh, changing his angle of delivery, coming over the wicket, and Lachlan throwing himself full length to his right to stop that one. Okay, Sam is keeping very tight from one end. Gulbadeen Naib leaking a few more from uh, the opposite end. And, uh, long off would make sure that's only a single. Darwish Rasuli on the boundary. He got a nice 50 today. And once again, let's just remind uh, everybody watching. One, thanks for joining us. And two, of course, Mohamed Nabi won, winning the toss, electing to bat first and having, what, making four changes in the team. And so far, has worked out very well for him. But I'm sure he's still a little worried because there is plenty of batting for Kabul. Singles won't cut it for Kabul at this stage. It's been a very good over for them, 14 from it. But remember, they started off this over needing 16.33. Yeah, well, just to indicate the impossibility of the situation or the extreme difficulty, 16 runs every over for another five overs just doesn't look plausible. To short fine, <laughs> and Masari can once again not field it with any kind of uh, confidence there. So what a bad day for him. 15 gone, 162 for three. Just a tiny hope still left for Kabul. Five overs remaining, 162 for three. They're going to have to go some, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility from what we've seen here today. We just need to find uh, a spree of boundaries and suddenly they'll be back in things. Case Armour, three overs, one for 19 so far has been terrific. Now he just needs to finish it up, knowing full well that they're going to be after him. <laughs> There's a call of two straight away, and they're going to come back and should get there easily. Well placed. He got the pace on the ball exactly right. Knew that uh, Munawira was on the boundary edge. And straight away, as he hit it, he called for two and made it comfortably in the end. 35 of 16 deliveries for Shahidullah. Been an outstanding inning so far. Goes again. And it just clears the man at short third man. It'll have uh, enough on it to go to the boundary as well. Not in control. It was the googly, I think, from Case Ahmed. But he swung at it hard enough to get it just over the man and away for a much needed boundary. It's a beautiful shot, Shahidullah. Just big age, and Mazari just only can watch. 
That's such a nightmare for him. Win for six ball six sixes. Looking for two. That's only one. The game. Oh, missed throw. The game is just turning like 27 balls left, 76. The good thing is for Kabul's one on Wicked in hands. And this man, Lori Evans, if he is in the, in the crease, there is a possibility for Kabul's one on to win the game. Hasn't been at his fluent best today. Lori Evans, 10 of 13. Can he open the shoulders now and find the boundary? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's uh, been left stranded. He wanted the single, Shahidullah was moving nowhere. Rooted to the crease, and Laurie Evans, no chance to turn and get back. They've thrown one away here. Of the Kabul's one on. They needed these two to get going, but it's not going to happen. You have to think that uh, probably wasn't a single there. Straight to the field, it bounced up nicely for him. Good return to the keeper. And that's a soft wicket, but one they'll take, no doubt. So Laurie Evans has to begin the long trek back to the pavilion. 10 or 14, 169 for four. Well, we're a very interested spectators, those uh, in the VIP area. And uh, let's hope uh, that this goes down to the wire. Colin Ingram, the new man to the crease. And hasn't had a very good tournament thus far. Oh, can he pull something out of the fire here? He was treated harshly by Chris Gale in the one over he bowled when they fielded, went for 32. Now he's got to come out and try and find the boundary from the get-go. Round the wicket, Case Armoured will come to the left-handed Ingram. And there's no time to really play himself in. He's got to try and uh, either get Shahidullah on strike or find the boundary. Oh, straight away, he's sweeping. And uh, Chris Gale just comes around, palms it down. So a single will get uh, the in-batsman Shahidullah on strike. strike but a decent over this in the context of things just the eight conceded a wicket as well so uh, the run rate has escalated to 18 to the over started off at 16 and a bit and already at 18 oh down the wicket swing and a miss really good over that from young case armored four overs remaining 170 for four This is what's coming up, the Nangahar Leopards against the Paktia Panthers. It'll be match 15 in this Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. And it'll be live from the same venue, Sharjah, at 8 o'clock. But there's the small matter of uh, concluding this thriller here. 170 for four. And you would think, uh, having not looked what the opposition got, that uh, this would be a handy chase, but they're chasing 244. The captain, Mohammed Nabi, into the attack. This will be a crucial over, a swing over. If he can keep it down to 10, 12 to the over, that run rate will escalate to 22, 23. And then you'll have to think it's a bridge too far. But if they can manage to swing away a few boundaries here, they'll keep themselves in it. Yeah, just not able to find the timing. Saw him coming. He just just so late, Mohammed Nabi. Because of his action, he's able to... Uh, Really watch the batsman and release it and adjust as late as possible. 
such a skill to have. None for 19 thus far. And uh, into his uh, fourth over, so that's a terrific return in the context of this game. That's short, pulled away. And he's got him straight to Ben Laughlin out on the boundary. He's got away with one there, Mohammed Nabi. He knows it. It was a rank long hop and should have been dealt better with. But Shahidullah, all he can do is shake his head. He knows he's missed out there. He's played a good hand, though. He really did try to up the ante and get the run rate moving. But in the end, going for the boundary, not able to find it. And he knew straight away it hit it straight to Ben Lachlan. Doesn't have to move. And uh, takes uh, the simplest of outfield catches. He's not going to drop those. And he knows he's got away with one. The wry smile, but he'll take it. So uh, Shahid Dulagan for 40 of just 20 deliveries. 171 for five. Rashid Khan to the crease. And he's pretty handy with uh, Willow in hand. He's got the second fastest 50 in the tournament thus far of 23 deliveries. He's got so, some of that uh, same form here in this particular inning. 73 of just 20 deliveries. So we're getting near to where it'll be uh, a boundary required a ball. Still not able to find the boundary. Malcolm Waller keeps it down to one. This over has just gone for three, including a wicket. What an over. Expect nothing less from this talismatic Afghanistan player, Mohammed Nabi. But on the last delivery, has he got enough on it? Yeah, he has. Rashid Khan. Keeps their slim chances alive. Three overs remaining, 179 for five. Four overs, one for 27. For Mohammed Nabi and Case Ahmed finished with exactly the same figures as well. Mohammed Nabi going for a maximum of uh, the last delivery. Sport the figures somewhat, but he'll still be very happy with that return. Got away with one earlier in the over, not on that occasion. Right, so Ben Lachlan. He's missed out on the previous three games, but given a go tonight, two overs, one for 16 thus far. Entrusted with finishing the innings here for the bulk legends. And he'll know exactly what's required. This is why he's in the side to bowl a few overs in the power play and then to come back and close it off. Yep, uh, he's a very good bowler. And uh, he know what to do now. The, the good thing is uh, for a bulk, they have only three hours left. And for Kabul's one on 64 to chase, from here look very difficult. And Ingram, beautiful shot for a fog maximum, Saluriza. He didn't get any runs in this tournament so far. And he's struggling. I hope he can get some runs tonight. And uh, he just started, just got only first boundary of his innings today and uh, Navi is just thinking about to keep pressure on them that's a good ball a good change of pace and using his skills the most 
leading wicket taker bowler in Big Bash. Yeah, he comes with some pedigree, does Ben Lachlan. And he's really good at uh, bowling in these last few overs because of his change of pace. Good slower ball, got a good Yorker as well. Really is a, a very good T20 operator. And it's slashed away on the offside. Waller does uh, some good work there. It'll be interesting to see if <laughs> the feet were touching the boundary. He did palm it off just when he felt contact. I don't know if we'll have another look at that. He did a really good job. I just wonder whether that... Trailing leg maybe just touched the skirting. Umpire is not interested, so he's fine. It's a good save. That's a massive fog. Maximum Spagiza from Colin Ingram. That's what he's capable of doing. We've seen him in tournaments all over the world, Colin Ingram. And uh, he delivers in this fashion more times than not. He struggled in the tournament, but not so with this particular delivery. It was a change of pace, and he was able to adjust and hit it right out the middle of the bat. He knew straight away that he had got all of that. Spagiza, much needed. Oh, really well back by Ben Lachlan. Good change of pace, the slower ball bouncer. End of the over, two remaining, 193 for five. Too much to do, you'd have to think, for the Cowboys one on. We need 26 and over from here on in. That means 52 of 12 deliveries. <laughs> I need a few spuggies. If they're going to get anywhere near, it's a tall order. Never say never, good wicket. And Mirwes Ashraf, given the responsibility of bowling the penultimate over. Three overs thus far, one for 25. Well, that's up in the air. Has he got all of it? Yes, he has. That's the perfect way to start the over. That'll give them some belief. A fog maximum. Gave himself a bit of room, did Rashid Khan. And was able to get it just over. But well, that's all that counts. Yeah. What a shot from Rashid. This is his favorite area. True to the Kawa and he crossed the boundary with another fog maximum Spagiza in Mirwais. He will be thinking because this is the time to at least do two or three deliveries for the last hour. I don't know who will be the bowler. Hopefully not Mazari again because he already went for six sixes in the over. You never know. Maybe Mirwes go for some boundaries. That's another boundary. Beautiful shot. Back of the head of bowler. No chance for the fielder for another fog maximum Saluriza. That's 200 up for the Kabul's one on. They're making a fist of it here. They're not going to lie down. They're not going to give the game away to the bulk legends. And he's missed his length again. And Mirwes Ashraf. Trying to get it up in the block hole. And he only succeeds in bowling a length ball. Slapped away down the ground. So 10 of the first two deliveries. Fours, not enough though. They need a few spuggies. He's got to be spot on yet, as Muez Ashraf. He's uh, not expressed pace, so he's got to make sure that uh, he's getting it right up in the block hole. A fighter cricketer, Rashid Khan, not giving up. Another short attempt. Just only one runs. That's a good ball from Mirwais, good comeback, low full toss. He can't manage to hit. Did for a boundary or six runs. So very clever for Mirwais again. He's showing his skills and experience. A very old and experienced cricketer for Afghanistan from many years. A genuine all-rounder.
he wouldn't like that. Very old. <laughs> Maybe just experience. Experience. <laughs> He's still young, 31. Oh, really well ball. Big appeal. I reckon that's close. The umpire not interested, but I tell you what, he's given uh, four runs, which means that he reckons it came off the bat. I thought it was off the toe. I thought it was off the pad. And there was a big appeal. The umpire unmoved, and all he did when he did move was to signal the boundary. Yeah, he went for appeal a leg before, but it's, oh, it's looked very close. What do you think? Alistair. Yeah, it's a tough one. Maybe he got the inside edge onto the boot and uh, then it went away to the boundary. That's exactly what uh, the umpire thought. Mudway is not convinced. He's going, what? Really? Boundary nonetheless, though. Oh, that's a length ball. Can't bowl there. Cannot bowl there at the death. And Colin Ingram smokes it down the ground. Round. Spagiza, fog maximum. And this over is costing a few. 21 so far off the over and still a ball remaining. What an over for Kabul Zwanan in this man. Ingram, he finds the boundary again and he's showing his power in Mirwais. 21 runs, his first five deliveries and only one ball left. Can he save one dot ball? Tell you what, this goes for six or four. It makes the last over interesting. Six would be uh, the desired result. Oh. And he's tried to hit it for six, but he's going to get it in the gap. Oh, I thought it would go for four. That's a good hand. It really is. And it'll just be a brace to end the penultimate over. So one over remaining, 216 for five. Well, they've made a great fist of it, of uh, the Carbals one on. But you have to think, maybe just left themselves too much to do at the end. It's a good hand. They'd have gone for four. It would have been uh, 218 for five. So uh, how important will that be in the greater scheme of things at the end? So Ben Lachlan is going to be bowling the last over. This is where you earn your wedge as the overseas player. As the, the bowler that's supposed to do the job at the death. One for 30 thus far. Right, here we go. Last over. Try to bowl the Yorker. Full toss, but gets away with it. And, uh, yeah, he knows that he's missed out there, Rashid Khan. He knows also that it makes it doubly difficult now to get over the line. Five balls. Five sixes needed, almost. Or four, four, uh, four sixes, at least one four. Otherwise, there is a no chance for Kabul Zwanan. So, Ben Laughling have to think at least a one dot ball welcome return to form for colin ingram he's had a poor tournament thus far and come out tonight 29 of 13. so regardless of how this game goes that'll stand him in good stead as the tournament progresses i really need him to be firing as well and uh, he spent some time in the middle hit a few out the middle of the bat but they still Still a possibility, a mathematical possibility that he can win it. Well, he's gone down the ground. Has he got all of it? No. Really good catch under pressure. That's top stuff. It really is. He hit it hard. It went low, flat, hard. And he's plucked it out of the air. Outstanding catch from Darvish Rasuli. Brilliant with batting today. And the catch was absolutely amazing. Such a pressure catch. That's his, his smartness and the capability of his skills.
Very well, Judge Catch, in the end. In Colin Ingram, 29 after 14 deliveries, 217 for six. Shokat Zaman, the new man to the crease in the first delivery, flicks it around the corner for four. Not a great delivery from Ben Lachlan, trying a slower ball. Ended up just being a full toss, and that's an easy put away. 24-3, so the game's gone. It disappeared when Ingram was superbly caught. And as mentioned, they've made a really good fist of this run chase. It's been a superb surface here in Charger, and... The ball has disappeared to all corners all day. That's full and straight and exactly where he needs to be. And all the, the batsman can do is bash it down the ground for one. Rashid Khan, 19 off six. He's uh, tried his best at the end as well to try and find the boundary. And get his team over the line, but too little, too late. Oh, there we go. There's a, a takeoff of M. Stoney, and all he's done is hit it straight down the throat of uh, Rasuli again. This time it's an easier catch. And another one bites the dust, another one perishes. He's having the time of his life. Rasuli runs with bat in hand, and now in the field has taken two catches. This one less important, but still, he needed to take it, needed to get underneath it, needed to make sure that uh, all was okay. Safe as houses. So Rashid Khan, his uh, little cameo comes to an end. 19 of seven deliveries. 2-2-2 two, two, two for seven. That's the end. All Muslim Musa can do is dig out the Yorker. And uh, they'll end up on 223 for seven on any other night. That would be plenty to win a game of T20 cricket. But tonight, chasing 245 to win. They're going to fall uh, a little bit short. And the bulk legends will win by 21 runs in the end. It's been a fascinating encounter. This first one here tonight at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. And the table toppers, bulk legends, go further ahead. They've uh, pulled out a mighty clinical performance. They changed their side today. Four changes brought in some of the guys that hadn't played in the tournament thus far. We saw Chris Gale fire for the first time. And uh, it's been an excellent effort to uh, defend 244. They had their scares on a occasion. Hazrat Tullah Zazai, who can forget his innings? 62 of just 17 deliveries, an outstanding innings by him. But in the end, it was just a bridge too far. They couldn't quite get the runs required to uh, cause an upset. Rashid Khan will uh, lead his team out to uh, obviously shake hands of the opposition. It's been a thrilling contest, really has. And uh, we've been privileged to uh, have front row seats to watch the ball disappear to all corners. It really has, you have to say, the surface has been excellent. The bowling, probably less so. And that's how it uh, panned out in the end. 47 of 38 for Luke Ronke. Hazratullah, outstanding. 62 of 17. And then a few cameos down the bottom of the innings. Shahidullah, 40 of 20. 29 of 14 for Colin Ingram. And Rashid, 19 of 7. But not enough to overhaul the total of 244. Well, they went uh, a country mile, all the bulk legends bowlers, particularly 
Mazari. I'm going to feel sorry for him. One over for 37. Hasratullah getting hold of him. Gulbadain as well. Went at 15s. Well, it was Kais Ahmed and Mohammed Nabi, the two spinners, that uh, were the difference in the end. It's confirmation of match 14 in the Afghanistan Premier League. 244 for six, the bulk legends. Chris Gale, 80. Rasuli, 50. Munawira, 46. Fareed Malik, 2 for 48. Had it, no ball problems. And then Kabul's one on 223 for seven. 62 for Hazratullah, 47 and 40 for Ronki and Shahidullah. Three for 37 for Ben Lachlan. And the net result of all of that was at the bulk ledge. Consolidate their position at the top of the table and win it by 21 runs. Radio, let's go downstairs now to Brian Murgatroyd. Thanks very much. I'm with uh, Ben. Ben Lachlan. Ben, you've played a lot of 2020 cricket over the years. I reckon that's probably one of the more bizarre and amazing games you'll have played. Yeah, that's correct. That is a bit different, that one. So, yeah, I think we were none for nine after three overs and got 250 almost. Yeah, and then they were well in front after the power play. So, yeah, nice to get a win, but, yeah, things to work on probably. Well, what was it like to be in the field there where six sixes were hit by the opposition? Yeah, that was um, kind of felt like you were just having a net out there. Yeah, it was quite quite quiet out there and the balls were flying. So it's uh, good to watch and nice that it didn't cost us the game. But in keeping with the plan that you had for the last game as well, when you batted, just that conservative start, keeping wickets in hand, checking what conditions were like, and then with those wickets in hand, exploding. Yeah, definitely. So we've got um, like enough to have some pretty good players there to assess early on to see what we are, need to get to and sort of absorb that pressure because you can sometimes catch yourself on the wrong side there. So, yeah, the boys are batting really well at the moment. It's a pretty good batting wicket and a nice place to bat. So they're filling their boots. And really important as well in the way that you've used your bench strength this evening and still come away with the win. Yeah, the B team went all right tonight. So, yeah, no, we're all very eager to get out there and have a game. So it was nice to get out there and, you know, play our part and get the win. Thanks very much, Ben, and uh, congratulations for the victory this evening. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Uh, back to commentary. Thanks very much, Brian. Yeah, they are glad to get over the line there. It was a very batting-friendly wicket out there today, so hard work for the bowlers. This is confirmation of the standings. The bulk legends, 10 points way uh, out in front at the moment. The Carbals won on, remain on six, and the Paktia Panthers uh, on six, and then bringing up uh, the tail end, the Nangahar Leopards on four, and the Kandahar Knights on two. Just a reminder that the top four teams will qualify for the semi-finals. Don't go too far away. We'll be back back shortly with the post-match presentation.
Now that's what we would like to call a match and a half. 467 runs scored and only 40 overs. What a joy it is to be involved with the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League powered by Fog. A historic match for sure. Six sixes in an over. Very, very seldom done in the past. And of course, apart from that, we'll have to say just history all around. The bowlers may not have enjoyed it, but the batsmen certainly had a terrific time. And I hope all of you here at the Sharjah Cricket Ground enjoyed that match. You have to have. And of course, around the world as well, thank you for your company. Just before we get into the prizes, a quick um, thank you to our sponsors. Of course, big thank you to the Afghanistan Cricket Board. And along with them, uh, Snixer Sports, Fox Scent, Channel 489.1, Q Ticketing, Kapilwak Mobile, Kabab Al Afghani, Azara Private Hospital, Dubai, Sports Connection, and Khalij Times. And now, of course, a quick introduction to the presentation party. To my left, a man who will be very happy. Uh, at this inaugural APL, we've got Mr. Shafiqullah Stanikzai, CEO of the Afghanistan Cricket Board. You've got to have enjoyed that match. Mr. Aditya Karolia, Assistant Marketing Manager at Gulbahar, thank you for your title sponsorship. Mr. Kapilwak Safi, owner of the Kapilwak Mobiles Company. Mr. Fezan Malik, COO at Stardom Event Management Company. And now to the awards. Well, I suppose there were many fabulous performances, but only three awards to give away. The first one will be given by Mr. Kapilwak Safi presenting a check of US dollars 500 to the most stylish player of the match. Well, didn't he create history today? What a joy it is to watch his innings. Only 17 balls, 62 runs, six sixes in and over. Please put your hands together for Hazratullah Zazai. Wow, well done. We're all very proud. Out of you. Congratulations. Our next award is uh, for our most sixes of the match. Mr. Fezan Malik will present 1,000 AED. Ten sixes after a slow start. At one point, he really couldn't stop hitting them. Chris Gale. Congratulations. Uh, boss man, don't go too far. We have another award for you, if you don't mind. We do have a man of the match. US dollars 500, of course, goes to the man who got 80 from only 48, Chris Gale again. The check given away by Mr. Aditya Karolia of Gulbahar and the trophy by Mr. Shafiqullah Stanikzai. CEO, Afghanistan Cricket Board. He had a chat with us earlier today. Chris Henry Gale, we'd be happy to have another chat with you. Yes, sir. So much disappointment. You missed out on 100. <laughs> uh, that's unfortunate. Um, that's yeah. cricket. Um, unfortunate way to get out. Um, but, you know, I haven't said that. I think the fans have been waiting for this. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to be among the runs, you know, to get 80 runs today. It's fantastic. And more so, you know, get another win and keep that momentum going into the playoffs. Well, you're not going to lose after making 244 as a team. But, hey, listen, it was another shaky start. I mean, tough start today. Yeah, I mean, from a bowling point of view, it was a tough start. Um, I thought myself and Dilshan, you know, really actually add up to the condition as quickly as possible. And, you know, Dilshan actually took the pressure off me, you know, get some momentum. And then in the, in the middle period, you know, that's where I actually pick it up. Um, but like I said, it's a good wicket. Uh, goes to show six sixes um, today as well. So it, um, it was a close game. And like I said, this is what the fans want. This is what the crowd wants.
Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. And as written all over the faces of the Nangaha Leopards, a slip down the points table with a loss tonight, and that might end their tournament dreams. The Leopards are low in confidence after a beating from the Knights yesterday, a game that they should never have lost. And the Paktia Panthers, well, they will not waste any opportunity to hit where it hurts most. And uh, that's exactly what's coming up next. The Nangaha Leopards against the Paktia Panthers. It's uh, match 15 in this Afghanistan Premier League. It's live from the Sharjah Cricket Association Stadium. And it's all to play for for these two sides. I'll tell you what, the Nangaha Leopards, they'll be cursing themselves as to how they let it slip yesterday. But they did, and they've got to regroup tonight and try and make a comeback. Rightio, let's have a look at the, the Paktia Panthers, uh, how they've done so far. They lost the first one to Kabul and then uh, three victories. And they were looking uh, odds on favourites. And then they've lost to the bulk by 89 runs. And that means they're on six points. And a loss uh, tonight again will leave them on six. And with everybody else creeping up, not a good position to be in. So they need to win tonight and that will cement their place they'll be on eight points and they'll be okay and they'll back themselves to be in the semi-finals with eight points well brian murgatroyd was downstairs a little earlier caught up with shahid afridi i'm delighted to say that we've been joined by shahid afridi of the paktia panthers and uh, shahid well a bit of a rest for you so you must be fresh as a daisy yep i'm so i'm fair i'm very much fresh and uh, i think i still find some more boundaries, still fine. You're trying to get some runs. It's very important because upcoming game is, is very will be very crucial. So everyone, I think enjoying. Yeah, good. Yesterday a defeat though. What lessons have the team taken from that loss? Because it was a big loss. I think I, we in the we uh, before coming to the ground, we just uh, in the team meeting, and I just told them that guys before that game uh, we defend 124 runs, uh, and uh, so how good we are, we all know that. And uh, we're going to play each and every game as important as semi-final and final. So just focus for today's game and uh, don't try to do a less mistakes. So if in both teams, if we make less mistakes, that team will win. And you've beaten Nangahar already in the tournament. How much does that count for tonight? I think that was gone. That was history and uh, we uh, really done well in that competition. But the way we played the last game, that was very disappointment. And uh, now it's a new game, fresh day, and uh, we're going to play with our full strength. Shahid, thank you very much indeed for joining us and uh, good luck this evening. Thanks, man. He's always full of the joys of spring, Shahid Afridi. Nothing can get him down. Now, what about the Nangaha Leopards? They uh, started off with a victory and uh, then had three consecutive losses and that would have uh, dented their confidence big time and then they pulled out a win against Kabul by 15 runs but the loss yesterday to the Kandahar Knights by 26 runs will be a bitter pill to swallow for them and uh, they're running out of games really they've got uh, two left and they've got to make sure that uh, they get some points on the board they're on four at the moment and if they lose tonight they stay on four with only one game remaining and that will put them in a very precarious position Right, let's go uh, downstairs and see who Brian Murgatroyd has got with him this time. Delighted to say that we've been joined by Sandy Plamichan of the Nangaha Leopards. Welcome to the Afghanistan Premier League. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Now, you've come into this tournament off the back of a pretty remarkable effort for Nepal in the World 2020 qualifier. 24 wickets at an average of two, so you must be pretty confident. Yeah, it's all, all, the, all about the contribution of uh, every member from the team and uh, they made it really easy for me and uh, yeah, uh, we are into the second round and hopefully we'll make it to the qualifiers. Now of course on top of that you've had experience this year in the Caribbean Premier League. What will, wh how will that help you in this tournament do you think? Yeah, I think uh, all the leagues that I'm playing so far, I think it, uh, all the leagues are helping me to grow my, grow my game. And uh, yeah, uh, the experience will be count here as well. And uh, I think uh, it, this is a great moment taken by Afghanistan Cricket Board as well uh, to, to grow their cricket as well. So I hope uh, this, this game will gonna take, get me some more ex exposure as well. Is there any pressure on you because you're coming in now as an overseas player, particularly at this uh, business end of the tournament? 
I think uh, every game that I, um, uh, I used to play, I, I take it as an opportunity for me because uh, every game is an opportunity and if you, uh, if you make it count, uh, nothing would be better than this. And what's the mood in the team like? Because obviously you lost to uh, Kandahar last night, the, uh, the bottom side in the ladder, and, and this really is a very, very important game, isn't it? Yeah, every game is important right now because uh, uh, we are on the fourth position and uh, two on two games left, and we have to win all the two games. And yeah, very pretty, pretty confident all the boys. And uh, I think uh, today we're gonna rock on. Sandeep, thank you very much indeed for joining us, and uh, best of luck for this evening. Thank you, thank you very much. Charming young lad, and uh, he's come off uh, some very good form in those qualifiers. He's going to have to uh, play well to lift his team. The Paktia Panthers in uh, that uh, particular game, the last game they played against each other, 184 for 8. Shazad contributing, Samiullah as well, been cutting 3 for 25. And the Leopards, 163 for 6, so uh, losing by 21 runs, despite a uh, great effort from Ben Cutting with bat in hand, 71 of 39 and 49 not out from Shahidi, just not able to get over the line. Udana was uh, one of the gun bowlers in that game again two for 28 contributions as well from Afridi and Zia Rahman so they've uh, got to try and carry on their merry way the Paktia Panthers if they can repeat that they'll be very happy but the Nangaha Leopards their backs against the wall and I'm sure they're going to come out uh, fighting like cornered Tigers they need to because uh, they need some points to stay in this competition if they lose here they're going to be under some big pressure Radio, let's, let's see who's going to uh, bat and bowl first uh, out there in the middle with the two captains a little earlier. Charu Sharma. Well, it's been very hectic. We'll be down to the last match of our four doubleheaders here on Super Sunday. And the Panthers are squaring off with the Leopards. I've got the captains with me to my left, Mama Shazam. skipper of the Panthers and then to his left Ben Cutting skipper of the Leopards and finally of course David Dukes thanks so much for adjudicating this Ben Cutting's got the coin your call Mama Shahzad heads is the call David if you'll travel on all the way and please tell us eventually what happens tails sorry uh, Mama Shahzad you call heads all right Ben we heard that so you're gonna bat first obviously you must be licking your chops with uh, considering what happened in the previous match uh, yes and no. Um, as we've seen, the last couple of games, it's been high score in the afternoon. It tends to get a bit harder during the night. So um, we'll see if this wicket's the same. Yeah, uh, you raised the memory of the previous match? Which, uh, which one? <laughs> True. Okay, well, it's been pretty hectic. <laughs> well, the one that you lost. But hey, it's, it'll be nice to come back to winning ways. It will, yeah. Uh, we've got Sandeep coming in tonight for Nathan Remington. Uh, Remo did well for us with the ball last night. Picked up a couple of wickets. But obviously, Sandy's a world-class spinner. So we've thrown him straight in because I think this wicket's going to suit him. Now let me just confirm, you will bat first. We will bat first. All right, you know, just need to get that right. Good luck. Thank you. Mama Shazad, what, uh, did you watch a bit of that last match? Uh, no, not actually. I was just with my friend uh, Usman Ghani. is injured. I was with him, uh, so I didn't watch the match. Well, I hope he's all right. I, I truly hope so. But after what happened in the previous match, you must be just dying for that big hundred yourself. Yeah, it's, uh, actually we're not happy with the last game, but we will try very best to do the, win this match and we come back in strong and we have a couple of changes, so we must win this match. Are you happy to bowl first on this pitch? Uh, it doesn't matter to us. Uh, the pitch is same in the old match, but uh, we also want to bat first, but uh, it's, it's okay. Falling just a little behind on the points, of course, we hope that you make the final four. Any changes for this match? Uh, we have uh, three changes. I think Shahid Afrid is in and uh, Esanula is in. Uh, still, I don't know. Uh, yeah, please. <laughs> we'll take that. Listen, uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. All right. So, Ben Cutting wins the toss for Nangarhar Leopards and he will bat first. Yeah, early in the tournament, we saw sides winning the toss in the evening game, wanting to... Uh Bowl uh, first and uh, chase down later with the Duke coming down. Thought that would be an easy option. But now they're deciding to bat first. And that's how they stack up the Nangahar Leopards. Johnson Charles and Anton Devsic. When they get it going, stand by. And uh, if they get it going tonight, we could see the ball disappearing to all parts. Ramat Shah has had a decent tournament so far. The captain, Ben Cutting, has been inspirational. And uh, first look at uh, Sandeep Lamichain, the Nepalese leg spinner. And Mujibur Rahman is going to be uh, partnering him. So that should be a mouth-watering little episode in the game. 
And just a confirmation that they have won the toss and elected to bat first. The Paktia Panthers, Mohamed Shazad, well, nothing seems to face him at the toss there. <laughs> you ask him all sorts of questions and whatever happens, happens. Whatever comes, comes. He doesn't worry about it. He's just going to go out there and play only as he knows how to play. Cameron Dalport, he's yet to really get going in the tournament and uh, we hope tonight that he can maybe find the boundary a few times. Sekanda Raza, he's played really well in the tournament so far and will look to continue that good form. And what about Usuru Idana? He has been outstanding with ball in hand and uh, been pivotal in the success of the Paktia Panthers. Well, the umpires are beginning the long trek out to the middle and uh, the players will follow shortly alongside me, AJ Mera. What do you make of this encounter and who needs to do what? Thanks a lot, Lister. Yes, I think uh, as far as Lepers are concerned, they seem to have a very good uh, spin attack. Uh, everybody waiting in eagerness for the action to begin uh, the second game of the evening. We had a very high scoring game, the first one. All credit to Hazratullah uh, Zazai, the way back. Not to forget Chris Gale. Um, absolutely brilliant knocks from both of them for either side. But this is going to be a big game as well for the Lepers. Remember last night, they lost their game. So they will be under some pressure. And Mohamed Shahzad, well, uh, he's always proactive, always. Uh, something to do up on the field he's got his own uh, methods of batting as well and he'll be eager that his team does well because uh, last game they didn't have a great one udana of course has been special for them just having a chat mama shahzad with udana mr udana has been uh, absolutely brilliant with the ball the ways both the yorkers uh, the first two or three overs uh, with the new ball and uh, mentioning about the importance of this game now you can see Pakia, Pakia panthers they've got six points the Leopards, uh, they have four. So, uh, Kandahar Knights, they're just trying to uh, move up the ladder there. So, whoever loses this one will be under a bit of pressure coming into uh, the next week, which is going to be the business end of the tournament. So, it's going to be a very important game, this one, for both the sides, for the Panthers and the Leopards. So, uh, remember, the top four teams will be vying for the semi-finals. The team that finishes uh, first will be playing with the fourth position team the second uh, team uh, that finishes will be playing with the uh, third position team 437 runs for tarakai 150 for him his best 90. he's uh, got a decent technique of course uh, they like to have a good start anton devsich has been in uh, tremendous touch he's batted well couldn't do much in the last game but he's a very handy customer to see that strike rate up tells the story 250s for him in the APL a strike rate of almost uh, 141 239 runs for him so he's done well his best 94 yeah we've uh, seen him really cut loose and uh, with uh, Johnson Charles they make a fearsome uh, combination if uh, they do get going Yusuf Zazai He's going to be opening the bowling. Economy rate of uh, 8.2, so maybe a wee bit on the high side. Best of one for 15. But he's got some uh, good skills, good change of pace. And he's going to need all of that here tonight because it's a good wicket. We saw that in the previous game, that uh, there's plenty of runs on offer. So as a bowler, you have to make sure that you're spot on. Bismillah Yan Shinwari from Afghanistan is uh, the standing umpire in uh, this evening's encounter. And Anil Chaudhry is uh, assisting him, and uh, he's from India. So we're very nearly uh, ready to rock and roll here in this uh, very, very important game insofar as uh, this competition is concerned. And both sides will know exactly what's at stake. And that should prove for... Uh, a really, really good contest. We expect uh, lots of ebbs and flows and various stages of the game. But these uh, first few overs, the power play over is very crucial because uh, with the field restrictions, only two men out, you've got to make sure that uh, you try and find the boundary as uh, often as possible, get your team off to a flyer. Yeah, this man comes in, that's uh, Shai the Freedy. 
Didn't play the last game, uh, so coming after a break would be fresh, uh, raring to go. That's exactly what he was uh, talking about with Bruyne. Always a very handy customer ball, really well. Uh, the last game he played, Shahid Afridi. Just take a bit of time uh, settling in. It's going to be uh, hanged on uh, Dave Sitch on strike at the moment. So everything settled. And it's uh, ball number one of this game. Oh, no. Still will have to wait. Everybody, uh, Alistair, waiting patiently. Well, he took an age to tie up his shoelaces and got that right and then forgot to mark his run out properly. Well, anyway, it's better than uh, just uh, going through with it. We saw a few new, or no balls, I should say, in the, in the, in the first game that were costly. Rightio, here we go then. Right on. So first delivery from uh, Yusuf Zai, right on the bottom there, within the storm, that's exactly what it's got to do. Just having a word uh, with the umpire as well. If, uh, had a towel in the pocket, uh, just in case uh, the dew comes in. Just went to the ground. Uh, at the moment, looks absolutely perfect. No signs of dew. On the first two days, uh, the start of the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, we had some uh, issues regarding dew, and that was a big problem for the spinners, especially. The last few days have been pretty good. That's played well. Swiveling across uh, the first runs coming from the blade of Dave Sitch. Very nicely played. Fork four. Soloriza. Yeah, it was a very uh, average delivery, you'd have to say. With fine leg up in the circle. And he's running and uh, dug it in halfway down. That's an easy put away. And uh, Anton Dave Sitch is not going to miss out on those. As mentioned, this is a good surface. You've got to be spot on. You've got to make sure that your plans are clear in your head and you have the ability to execute because you get it slightly wrong, you're going to go the distance. Sometimes what happens, Alistair, is... You see the previous game and you think it was a very high-scoring game, you know, big runs scored, almost 500 runs in that game. So how to go about, so there would have been a bit of talk uh, by the coach, by the captain. So how to uh, really go, but I think, but you've got to uh, just play ball by ball, over by over. Don't think too big. Mujib, uh, Zahir, they have some brilliant spinners in the ranks. Don't forget Zahir Khan. Yeah, they would have had a chance to go out and uh, look at the wicket as well. So, yes, you've got in the back of your mind what's happened in the previous game. That gives you a, an understanding of, uh, of uh, what you need to be doing in the game that you play. It gives you an understanding of the conditions. But then you also got to go out there and, and assess yourselves. And I think they would have uh, gone out there and said, hey, hold on, this is a really good-looking pitch, much better than the one yesterday. So we've got to up the ante a little bit and uh, obviously know that it's going to be a high scoring game so you would have set the old stall out you would have been uh, going through the thought processes and know full well that uh, there's runs on offer here well that's up and over and uh, he hasn't quite got all of it more a pitching wedge than a driver and uh, they'll uh, come back for two so right off the bottom of the bat yeah but you were spot on alistair Because you didn't mention this is a very uh, good wicket, much better than what we saw yesterday. Not much uh, cracks on the surface. Uh, the binding has been good. And uh, my fellow commentator, Alistair, did mention it's going to be uh, full of runs. That's exactly what transpired in the first game. You can see the binding, the sheen on the surface. And this uh, typical of a Sharjah wicket. And that's exactly what we saw in the first game. Great work done by the ground staff as well. Full credit to them. That's played well. Up and over. That's going to be a four. 
Fog boundary to end the over. Expensive one from Yusuf. 10 without loss. So decent start here for the Leopards. Uh, last ball previous over really struck well by Anton. He's been in uh, great form uh, going up and over. Knew exactly what he was doing. Much better timing. Lovely bat flow as well. Freeing his arms up and getting the result he wanted. The young man will have to think. How to bowl against a quality batsman. It's going to be Suro Dana from the other end. He sure knows how to bowl to quality batsman. He's done it uh, all tournament long and uh, he's had the upper hand. Ten wickets in the tournament so far. Have a look at that economy rate. And that's bowling in the power play and at the death. Outstanding. Best of uh, four for 38. So uh, look for him to uh, be spot on in this particular game as well. I think uh, out of all the new bowlers uh, he's been the most impressive absolutely fantastic the way he's bowled just not about the wickets he's picked up the lines are uh, the slow ones the way he's weird his pace absolutely brilliant just see those wickets as well three against uh, Kandhar three for 19 four against uh, bulk it was a touch expensive but uh, absolutely brilliant in the death as well against the same team two for 28 against the Leopards so absolutely brilliant every game he's delivered for his side Oh, it's a big appeal. Oh, was it pitching outside? Leg stump. It's gone away for four. So, unfortunately, it'll cost him. But it was a terrific... ...delivery. Hurried him for pace. And he tried to play a little too square, did Tarakai. Played across it. And the only thing that saved him was that it pitched outside leg stump. Confirmation of that fact would have clattered into all three. Of that, there's no doubt. But you cannot be out if the ball pitches outside leg stump. And I think uh, there's uh, the umpire just having a word and saying, listen, this is what I thought. And uh, you're spot on, ump. That's a really good decision. Oh, he's a very good umpire, Anil Chaudhary. He's very consistent, very experienced as well. That's exactly what he told Udana. Wasn't very happy with Dana that uh, it wasn't given, but absolutely right. Once it pitches outside the leg stump, can't be given. Much fuller this time. It's a, once again a left and right.